Well, so guys, we're going to be talking about the new Black King 5 wheels. And uh, they're very interesting because uh, these wheels are an all carbon spoke wheel. And what's very interesting about them is the Black King have made these wheels even though they're not UCI compliant. Well, let's roll that intro and let's get into and have a look at these wheels and why would Black King make such wheels? Now this new black ink wheel is called the five, just word five, and it consists of five spokes. Now they're not like carbon spokes that are on the wind space wheels, which are the normal thin spokes that are just made out of carbon. These are a full section five spoke, like the old BMX wheels from the 80s that were made out of a reinforced plastic. So they have a very similar look to them. The actual spokes are made in a knacker shape with the back chop block, which they call a cam design. And they're a disc brake clincher tubeless ready wheel. And they weigh in at 1,318 grams. And the big question mark on these wheels is they're not UCI compliant. And that's because the UCI banned this style of wheels some years ago when we were still riding rim brakes. And I think that was due to the fact that they had some aero advantage and they didn't want to allow those bikes with those radical designs and wheels with radical designs to be raced at the pro level or a UCI level. So these wheels then are basically just a bling right around wheel and they priced it over 3,000 pounds. So why would you buy a wheel of this sort and you can't race on it? Okay, well let's get into why I believe these wheels could really have some huge benefit, especially on disc brake bikes. Well, currently we have low spoke disc brake wheels that they put on the high end top racing bikes. And these spokes have quite complex loading going through them. And that's because they have spokes on one side that are usually twice the tension of the other side because of the dishing of the wheel to allow for the disc brakes. They also have some spokes in radial and they have some spokes in cross spoking. So the radial wheels mostly hold up the wheel and give the wheel just normal integrity. The cross spokings are there to transfer the loading from the hub when you brake the wheel to the rim. So you have different spokes on the wheel could have quite different forces applied to them or detensioning to them at different times during the cycle of riding and braking and going around corners. Now, when we move to this black ink type wheel that has five spoke and it's made out of carbon, those five spoke are transferring all of these different loads through the same spokes. And this will give a more uniform characteristic to the wheel when you're pushing harder under brakes, you're leaning the bike over, you're going under over and undulating surfaces, which I've commented in my previous videos that I feel are a bit of a problem with disc brakes because I don't like the idea that we're only having maybe five or six spokes transferring all of the braking force from the hub to the rim. Now, maybe Black Ink are really onto something here, and I don't know what you guys think, but uh, this is a, I think, a really good, what do you call it, bringing back old technology for new technology in the bicycle industry. And they may be really onto something. And I really hope that the industry looks at these wheels in a bit of a different, a different light and the UCI decide not to maintain the ban on this type of wheel because I think this could actually enhance the development of disc brake wheels on disc brake bikes. But that is yet to be seen. Okay guys, you tell me, would you drop 3,000 pounds on a set of carbon wheels that you can't race on? because that is the, the huge negative here for black ink. But uh, I do hope that this wheel is successful and there's probably a trend towards these type of wheels in the future. Anyway, let's just jump into the comments corner and let's just have a look at the last video and what people had to say about the supply of bicycles in the bicycle industry.
Now there's a few comments on the last video and the first one was design flaws, manufacturing quality of new designs. So what they were saying is, is it's basically a combination of the design, the manufacturing designs were not good and then the quality when they're making those designs weren't good, which we've actually seen. We've seen some pretty poor designs and we've also seen some pretty poor QC or QA coming out of the bike industry. And as some of the people who commented pointed out, and even Habini pointed this out, that this is a systemic problem that's in the bike industry. But uh, my point was that will that quality deteriorate due to the lack of supply and the pressure that's on manufacturers to get stuff out and get that into shops? We just had one guy and he's been working in the bicycle industry and he said the Canyon problem was pre the COVID because he knows how long it takes for them to do the design and development and then actually manufacture the bikes and send them out. And he's saying that time would have been too great. So those problems with the Canyon Air Road would have been pre COVID, which is a very good point, which I didn't think of. Even though we're seeing the problems whilst the COVID is happening, the actual design criteria of those bikes was pre-COVID. Oh, one guy commented that uh, what's happening because there's no parts available, people are making very cheap knockoffs like printing rotors out of just sheet metal or uh, parts are disappearing out of boxes and we're getting some really poor quality parts because there's such a shortage. So we're having those, what do you call it, the black market or the pirates in the industry coming out with these real Al Cheapo parts because people are so desperate for them.